Good afternoon, everyone. My name is G. Lamar Stewart. I'm the Chief of Community Engagement at the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office. And uh, on behalf of Larry Krasner, Philadelphia District Attorney, uh, as well as our as well as our entire uh, executive team at the DA's office, we want to welcome you to our monthly uh, now virtual one-stop job and resource hub. Uh, we are excited uh, that every month we have the opportunity to bring uh, a number of employers, victim service agencies, trauma care professionals, uh, and other social service providers and educational institutions, um, uh, their services, I should say, uh, to communities across the city. Of course, pre-COVID, we were transforming schools and faith institutions and rec centers into uh, this hub experience. Uh, but because of COVID, uh, we have, uh, of course, transitioned into a virtual capacity. And so we're excited to continue uh, to bring these services to the community uh, and to each and every one of you. Uh, and thank you for, for joining. We're gonna ask that you uh, would invite some people to, uh, to, to join, um, sh share the link uh, with others that you know who might be uh, interested in, in hearing more about this information their employers that will be presenting uh, and, and sharing uh, here in the next few minutes. And we're excited to, uh, to bring all these opportunities to you. I have the awesome opportunity to work uh, beside a, a phenomenal team. And you're gonna hear from uh, different members from our community engagement team uh, over the next two hours, but uh, I'll just uh, introduce them briefly. Um, we have two uh, community engagement liaisons as well as a special assistant to community engagement. Uh, and so our special assistant, Seth Myers, uh, who's with us uh, uh, here on uh, this Zoom today, as well as Andreana Barefield, who is our community engagement liaison for East uh, and Northeast areas of Philadelphia. And then we also have Rayshawn Abdullah, who is our community engagement liaison for uh, Center City, parts of North Philly, um, as well as the Northwest section of the city of Philadelphia. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to invite Andreana Barefield just to uh, to greet you here in this first portion uh, of our job and resource hub. And uh, right after our greeting, uh, we'll get into uh, presenting uh, several of our employers. Andreana. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as uh, G. Lamar Stewart stated, my name is Andreana Barefield. I am the community liaison for East and Northeast uh, Philadelphia. Basically in short, what that means is it's my job and my pleasure to uh, go out in the community, uh, build relationships, learn what it's like to live in uh, each of the local communities within those parts of the cities, and then create a pipeline of communication between the community and our office. Um, a lot of that uh, deals with uh, knowing what your needs, interests, and wants are. And um, much in the spirit of that, that is where this initiative came from. Um, G. Lamar and other folks from our office were out in the community. And uh, what they heard from you was that uh, there needs more, we, you need more opportunity, uh, economic opportunity, employment, professional opportunity. Um, and so we hope to be able to serve just um, that small piece in, in this way, one stop, we were doing in person and, uh, you know, um, to see how it's grown and adapted even in a virtual capacity and being able to continue to try to meet the needs of the community members that I have the privilege of building relationships with is just truly awesome. Um, and I'm happy to continue to do that work as I also attended a one stop prior to um, working in the district attorney's office. So I would encourage everyone to have an open uh, mind and spirit and uh, looking forward to getting this thing started. Thank you, Adriana. Well, listen, we're gonna move right into our uh, employers and those who are presenting. And so uh, in our first block, we have several employers uh, and social service providers. And so the first presenter uh, is Brown Super Superstores, uh, Ms. Marie Wagner, who's with us today. So glad to have you, Marie. Uh, and so uh, we'll be uh, running your slides here. And so uh, if you can unmute yourself and uh, your there slides. We go. Great. Do you want to start now? Yes, you may. And we'll okay. ask all the presenters to please uh, just mute yourself uh, while uh, so we won't get any feedback. But you can get started. 
Sure. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be participating in this virtual job fair. It's our, my first one. Um, and I'm really eager to discuss the opportunities we have at Brown Superstores. Uh, Brown Superstores own and operate 10 ShopRite supermarkets and two fresh grocers. We have six um, of our stores are within the city of Philadelphia and the others in the outlying uh, suburbs of Philadelphia. Um, most people think of working at a supermarket as a, you know, short part-time job. They don't really look at it as a career. The supermarket industry, um, I am proud to say, is a great career. It is certainly, I've been in the supermarket industry for over 20 years. I've been with Browns for 16 of those years. And it is, Browns is a great company to work for. I know many of you know our owner, Jeff Brown, um, you know, and what he does for the community um, and his associates. Um, I tell people when I interview um, and speak to applicants, I tell them that there's four things that they need to do to be successful in our company. And number one is to come to work when you're scheduled. Number two is to make sure that you're on time. Number three is to have a good work ethic. So while you're at work, you, you work. And number four is to be friendly. I mean, we are in the customer service business. We happen to sell cornflakes and broccoli, but really it's all about the people. It's about the people who work for us and about the people, our customers that we serve. There are so many opportunities within our stores. Uh, there are entry level positions. You don't have to worry if you've never worked at a supermarket, never run a register or slice lunch meat. We train on the job, so you're getting paid to learn. Um, and I'm proud to say as an HR supervisor for the company that we promote from within. So we want to promote and develop our associates to one day be department managers, uh, store management also. I am also really proud to say that we are a second chance employer. We have many returning citizens who are currently employed with us. And we also, there's quite a bit that have also um, been promoted into management positions. Um, I want to just let everyone know, your friends, if you're interested or someone you know is interested in working for us, uh, please, you can go online at shoprite.com or thefreshgrocer.com. Our locations are in the PowerPoint presentation. Just make sure that you choose one of our locations um, because those applications are the only ones that we have access to. Also in our PowerPoint presentation are the local HR supervisors for those stores as well as the contact phone number. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Marie, and thank you for all you do. And please send our hellos to Mr. Brown. Um, our next presenter is from America Works, uh, Steve Oski. Uh, you can unmute yourself, Steve, and you have four minutes to present your slides. Thank you, Lamar. Good afternoon, everybody. Really happy to be speaking with you. And I appreciate the opportunity that the district attorney's office is giving us. So on the slide, you'll see what America Works is all about. We are part of the employment network of the Social Security Administration's Ticket to Work program. So if you or someone you know is between the ages of 18 and 64, if you're receiving either SSI or SSDI disability benefits, we may be able to assist you in entering or re-entering the workforce in full-time employment. The program is totally free and with no cost to you. The reason I say we may be able to assist you is your ticket has to be assignable to us. So if you're, we're one of 23 vendors nationwide that has the privilege from the Social Security Administration to be part of this program. So if a person's ticket is assigned to another vendor, we cannot enroll you, but it very rarely happens that way. So if you're between 18 and 64, receiving SSI or SSDI and are interested in getting back into the workforce, I'd love to help you. Been with America Works for eight years, ran my own resume business for 10 years, worked as a recruiter for Manpower for two. So I've been doing this for over 20 years. We're really proud of our company. So if we could perhaps move to the next slide, that would be great. 
Thank you. So since 1984, our company has been helping uh, clients with every aspect of their job search. Uh, we placed close to a million people uh, since the mid 1980s. We grew from one office in Manhattan in New York to more than 20 offices in 16 states and the District of Columbia. So we've got a really long history in doing this kind of work and in tackling and overcoming every single uh, aspect of the job search. As you'll see, our placements have ranged from entry level to executive positions. We have people that have never worked a day in their life. We have people at the other end of the wage scale that have been executives. So whichever kinds of positions you're interested in, we're very confident that we can help you. If, if you look to the right hand side of the screen, this is a partial, thanks. This is a partial list, not a complete list, but a partial list of some of the kinds of positions that we've helped people obtain. Um, we have work from home positions. You'd have to have a high speed internet connection for that. We have call center customer service positions, clerical administrative support positions, medical and healthcare positions in hospitals, doctor's offices, health systems. Um, those hospital and health system positions include dietary positions, environmental services, and medical positions that require certification like RNs, certified nursing aides, certified medical assistants. Point I wanna make is whatever kind of employment you're interested in, we would love to have the opportunity to assist you. This list also includes security officers, uh, retail, supermarkets, big box retailers. I've actually met Marie, the predecessor that made a presentation a moment ago. We really uh, are flattered and privileged to have a great relationship with uh, Brown Superstores. We really appreciate that. So we have helped folks uh, to secure employment with Brown Superstores. We do work with distribution centers. We've helped people in the food and beverage industry, the whole gamut, cooks, servers, dishwashers, other kitchen personnel. And we've helped folks get into hotel housekeeping, custodial positions in different settings with schools, government buildings, and other locations. Um, the, the final slide, if you will. Thank you. So as you'll see, when I say that we'll help with every single aspect of the job search, too much to mention here, but we help you with resume preparation. We give you um, preparation and mock interviews. We send your resume out. I pick up the phone. I call employers. I set up interviews for you. I help you do online applications if you need help. I follow up for you to put in a good word to advocate for you. If you need referrals for food, housing, mental health services, my colleague Latasha Washington, our ticket to work supervisor and specialist can help you with that. We do job referrals from the hundreds and hundreds of employers that we know in this area. We help with retention services. We help you get to the jobs and back with gas cards, with SEPTA tickets. We have bonus incentives for retaining the employment. Another aspect that we're really proud of, we have a certified benefits counselor. She does not work for the Social Security Administration. She works for America Works, but is trained by the Social Security Administration. She can advise you on what your rights are, how your benefits will be affected. If you get a, a letter or a phone call from Social Security, uh, she can help you to deal with that. So anything you need to get, retain employment and make it fit into your life and your lifestyle, we can help you with. Our contact information is on the far right. I mentioned Latasha Washington. She's our ticket to work specialist. Uh, we have an office in the Center Square building at 1500 Market Street. But please remember that we are like most companies or many companies, we're working remotely right now. So Latasha Washington can be reached at 215-774-3001, extension 100. Her email address is lawashington at americaworks.com. And we would love to hear from you. We'll offer you an initial consultation to explain what our program is all about and how your benefits will be affected. And if you're interested in enrolling, we would love to do that. So that's the extent of it. I went sort of quickly, but uh, Seth and, and G. Lamar can get you in touch with me. Uh, we would love to hear from you. So I thank everybody for listening. Steve, thank you so much. And thank you for all thank you do. You. Uh, our next presenter is Joseph Taylor. Uh, Joseph is from SEPTA. We'll ask Joseph if you could turn your camera on uh, and uh, your slides will be uh, up shortly. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Okay. We can hear you, Joseph. Okay. Uh, yeah, again, again, my name is Joseph Taylor. I'm a recruiter for SEPTA, um, South, Southeastern Pennsylvania Air Transportation Authority, uh, the main transportation authority in the Philadelphia area. Uh, right now, we are 
currently actively and um, pretty much um, aggressively hiring for a number of positions in our areas. And we're looking for people like you to come and fill those positions. Um, if you will pull the next slide up, I can show you what we're lo mainly looking for at the moment. Um, mostly we're looking for people who help our products run, um, our buses, trains, and um and other facilities um basically run so we're looking for like mechanical ind individuals electrical individuals bus drivers and bus operators engineers um welders though um transmission specialists hvac specialists those are the main people that we're looking for right now those are the those are the main needs that we have for at the moment basically skilled 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 trade professionals that we're looking for right now um, we do have, do have some professional management positions at, at the moment that are open right now and then upcoming. But again, our main focus right now are our skilled trade areas. Um, so, for example, our, we look for plumbers and HVAC technicians, painters, electricians, all these things that um, that we sort of got a backlog off because we had to do sort of a hiring freeze, with, if you will, with the pandemic. But that is over. And we are actively and um, aggressively recruiting for these positions. Um, each recruiter I accept their recruits for different types of areas. My main focus is the skilled trade areas. So my main focus is working with electricians and mechanics and, um, and machine operators, uh, electrical operators. So, for example, on this sheet that you see here, um, I'm looking for construction equipment operators. I'm looking for the 0881. I'm really looking for that one. If you have a rail vehicle, a DC motor, AC DC motor. Um, specialist that's on the left side of that screen. Um, I'm also looking for a um, for maintenance managers with that's under the professional man management category. I'm looking for rail vehicle electrical electronic maintainers that's under the vehicle electrical maintainer category. I'm looking for vehicle mechanics first and second class and also third class which, which is going to be posted later on this week. So those are the main positions that I'm personally looking for. But all these positions that you, that you see right now are actively um, our active positions that people can be um, can begin the hiring process for immediately because again these these are these are things that we need right now. Um, so that's basically it as far as the overview of what SEPTA is looking for. If you go to the last page, it'll have my contact information, I believe. Yeah, what, what it, those are the basic instructions on how to apply for SEPTA positions at SEPTA. It's really important that you make sure that your resume is up to date and that your skills are showing within the resume. Um, as is that we are. Look, looking for good candidates for these, position, for these positions right now. These are also competitive positions, so we have to make sure that your that your resume indicates why you should be you should be chosen um, amongst your competition, um, and and what skills you have that, that that we can bring you in for the position. Generally, for the skilled trade positions, if you are selected as a candidate, what happens is you're sending you're sending an invite via email and or text to come in and complete complete testing for the position at our testing center downtown at 1234 Market Street. Um, that is that is the case for all the skilled trade positions except for bus operators. Bus operators receive um, an online test that they take that they take that they take on their own via computer or cell phone. All the other skill trade positions are going to come in and do a testing at our 1234 market location that you're going to schedule once you're invited. Um, so once that process is taken care of, you, you're coming in and, and you, you pass your testing, you're brought in to meet with one of our managers to do um, an interview. Right now we're doing WebEx interviews at the moment because we can't do on-site interviews um, with, with um, the COVID um, <clears throat> initiatives going on. So right now we're doing WebEx interviews that we're doing via computer, via the manager. You can do it via, you can do it on your computer, you can do it on your phone, whatever the case may be. Once that is done um, and you pass the interview and if you um, if you pass the background check and your medical screening, then you'll, you'll then you'll then be hired during one of our orientations, which come up in most likely in the fall. Uh, but that's the basic overview of our services, basic overview of what we're looking for. If you have any questions about anything that I've said here or any questions about any positions that you see in the system, feel free to email me. Um, I would say call, but we're not in the office right now. We're working from home. So email is the best way to do it. Uh, my email address is listed there, jataylor at setta.org. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, uh, Joseph, and appreciate all that you do and all that SEPTA does. Our next presenter uh, is um, Reverend Myra Maxwell, who is the director of the DA's office CARES program. Uh, it's a separate entity from our community engagement unit that works uh, to serve uh, victims, or I should say co-victims, 
of Homicide. We're excited to have with us today, Reverend Myra Maxwell, Director of uh, DAO Cares. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, G. Lamar. I appreciate Jake, there's so much being here. Um, of course, I'm with Philadelphia CARES. Um, CARES is an acronym for Crisis Assistance Response and Engagement for Survivors of Homicide. So primarily, we have a team of 16 staff, and we go out to the actual site of homicide deaths, and we su provide support to the families in the immediate aftermath of the homicide. Uh, we make sure that we are providing information and referrals to, for them. Uh, we are a new program. Um, so we started in around 2018 with the district attorney's office. And this particular type of program has never been done uh, in a district attorney's office before. So we're really excited about this program. Our role is to provide immediate support, which means that we are there to support families after the notification of a homicide death. Now, pre-COVID, we were able to um, identify or work with the families on the scene at the hospitals because families will go there because on, uh, sometimes the, the uh, person is taken to a hospital and also the medical examiner's office. Of course, with COVID-19, now we are pretty much doing things uh, virtually by phone. So we are there to provide crisis res response within hours after the, uh, the homicide death. In saying that, we have peer crisis responders, which are each one of them have lived experience, which means that they have lost someone to homicide here, whether it's in a city, but they have lost a loved one to homicide. Our role is to make sure that families are getting information and resources that they need in order to get through or navigate some of our criminal justice systems, working with police, talking to media and all of those uh, immediate needs. We also help provide immediate uh, emergency support, which means it may be emergency food, uh, resources that the family may need. We assist them with uh, identifying other programs to provide the long-term because our program is a short-term program, which means that we're actually working with the family from uh, up to about 45 to 60 days after the homicide death. But we also refer to our community-based partners, uh, which there are several victim service uh, providers in the city of Philadelphia. So we provide uh, re referrals to longer term services, which could be counseling, assisting in completing the VCAP or the Victims Compensation Assistance uh, Program claims. Also, we make sure that if there are any type of other needs that the family may have, which means that there could be needs for, uh, it may be a gas issue, they may not have their gas on, electric on, so we make sure that we identify all of those needs for the families and we give them all of the support we can to get them to the proper resources. We also work really extremely close with both. Of sure. course, yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Rodney, you're up. All right. Yourself. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? All right. We can hear you, sir. All right. Thank you very much, G. Lamar. Thank you for the DA's office for having us here. And um, I am Rodney Hammett. I am from the um, Institute for Community Justice. I am a President Lincoln Specialist at ICJ, and I'm also the community liaison for the Man Up Association. And as you can see, we work hand in hand with each other man up in ICJ. Basically, when the men come home from being incarcerated, um, in particularly at SCI Phoenix, there's a 15-week program that they take, and they can come home, and they can take advantage of employment, as well as we have a um, on-site medical center as well, too, that we can connect them with medical care as well as dental. And um, a lot of gentlemen come home, and they don't have the experience of um, resumes and things like that. And we help them build their resumes. We also have a uh, partnership with our uh, workforce development. And we have a success rate. We found out that the success rate of the men that come from um, SCI Phoenix and other SCI institutions, that they have a higher success rate of finding employment because they are well-groomed in certain areas compared to a lot of um, gentlemen who are um, out here on the street already that's looking for jobs. So um, you can go to the next slide. 
and as you can and, and as you can see here we also have um financial literacy um plan for the future we have a lot of gentlemen who um they don't know about bank accounts they don't know about how they can save and you know prepare for the future as well as just um practicing good um monetary um goals and needs that they need for their uh, future well as their family and households and we also have career coaching um that allows them to uh, pursue job goals and also we have uh like i said resume writing interview practice um and computer skills as well too a lot of gentlemen we find that come home that they um just for example they don't know how to work a cell phone they don't know how to set up their um uh email email address we all know how important that is for communication for a lot of employers nowadays everything is email orientated and um we also have on um, short-term and long-term placement um assistance um you know connecting with important employers partners and things of that nature as well as shop right um brown shop right um, a lot of warehouse um, opportunities and um culinary opportunities as well so we have different um, variations of jobs opportunities when men and, and women come home um, from being incarcerated, transitioning and back into society. We just want to meet them right where they at, as well as encourage them, encourage them through our workshops. And uh, we also have, like I said, the Man Up and ICJ work hand in hand. We have a, um, a Man Up hub that's on the premises at ICJ, 1207 Chestnut Street, that allows the men to engage with each other and as well as motivate each other um, so that we can all go to the next level in life. And speaking of speaking of man up, the peer support group, we feel as though that in order for the men, for them to feel encouraged, for them to sustain that level of um, ability to show that they have support, we all support each other. Myself, I was incarcerated myself, so I am the facilitator of the of the group. I feel as though that being transparent when men come home helps them be able to relate um, to, to, to someone who's been through the things that they have been through. And, um, you know, we just want to change that narrative that when when men come home, when women come home, that that they don't do the right thing. And that's why we have these opportunities in place, jobs, employment, resume building, and also motivational speaking to just help the men and women um, sustain that level of competency. And um, as you can also see here, the benefits of Man Up is um, increased confidence, Foundation skills, foundational skills, finding a job and keeping a job. That's the main part. When you find a job, keep a job. And that and that comes from just being punctual, being on time, dressing, dressing right, you know, putting a belt on, wearing a suit and tie if you have if you're in a business type atmosphere and and emotions, managing emotions and things of that nature. These are the things that will help us and help us to help them sustain that level of um, employment on a long term basis. And we also have the Man Up Community Restoration um, Project as well that the men can participate in in the, in the streets of Philadelphia, engage in the community as well as engage with the uh, the elders, the people that's in the communities, help clean our communities. Before COVID nineteen, we were in the Strawberry Mansion area for eight weeks straight, and we were out there cleaning the streets of uh, of North Philadelphia. As you can see there, engaging with the community. Um, we even have some young young guys come out there. And as you can see here, we're we're all together cleaning and um, just being on the same page. And I and I think unity unity is, is is what's needed nowadays as we see a lot going on in the community. And I think that we lead by example um, at the Man Up Association along with ICJ. Thank you so much, Radhi. Appreciate all the work that you all continue to do both at ICJ and Man Up. Uh, our you. next presenter today uh, is Jim Delafora from our private criminal complaint unit at the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office. Great to have you, Jim. Great, great to be here, Lamar. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, buddy. Okay, great. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I supervise the Private Criminal Complaint Unit here at the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office. I've been supervising the unit for about three years now. I've been with the office for about 14 years now. Just to let you know what we do, the Private, private Criminal Complaints, uh, Pennsylvania law allows an individual who feels that they were a victim of a crime and they reported to the police, but the offender was not arrested by the police and charged for whatever reason, they can apply for a private criminal complaint with their local DA's office. Uh, charges filed this way are called private criminal complaints. In Philadelphia, if the victim uh, of a crime calls the police and the police come out, they make a police report. If the police determine that it's a misdemeanor, and if they also determine that the accused 
I'm sorry, the complainant knows the accused, they know their first and last name and knows the address of the accused, police will most likely refer that person to the private criminal complaint unit at the DA's office for the filing of a misdemeanor charge. As I said, in order to file, apply for a private criminal complaint, the complainant must know the first and last name of the accused and also know their, the accused address and have a police report number from when they called the police and the police came out and made a police report. That police report number is called a DC number. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, in Philadelphia, uh, private criminal complaints are uh, made for only misdemeanors that don't require any additional investigation by police or detectives. We don't handle felonies. Felonies, we refer back to the police and detectives to fully investigate, and we don't handle summary offenses. So just to give you an idea, what we mostly do are simple assaults that occur between people who know each other, like neighbors or friends or acquaintances who have a falling out. Or we also see a fair amount of criminal mischief uh, that occur between people who know each other, maybe as an extension of a disagreement or a fight or an argument over something. Um, so uh, to apply for a private criminal complaint, it used to be prior to the coronavirus, we took walk-ins uh, at, at our office here at 1425 Arch Street, and you'll see our address here at the end. But due to the coronavirus, uh, we now have to pre-screen people who come into our offices um, and uh, make sure that they have all the information they need in order to file a private criminal complaint so that nobody has to waste a trip coming in to talk to us. Again, the complainant needs the first and last name of the accused and the address, and then you have made a police report about the incident and have the DC number. We also, during the pre-interview, pre-screen process, we make sure that the person is coming to us for a legitimate private criminal complaint issue as opposed to something that's maybe a landlord-tenant dispute that's not a, a criminal matter or a family court or child custody issue that's not uh, a criminal matter. It's something that's dealt with in family court. We would get a lot of extra people walking in because they were basically coming to us for the wrong reasons. But anyway, uh, we, we do uh, pre-screens for our complainants over the phone to make sure they have all the information they need and the documents they need before they get a, an appointment with us. Once they have all that together, we make an appointment for them to come in and apply for a private criminal complaint. Once they apply for a private criminal complaint, if their complaint is approved, uh, probably by me, uh, they, um, they will take their approved paperwork from our office on Art Street. They'll take it a few blocks away to the Municipal Court Administrative Offices on Chestnut Street. At the filing window there, they will present their approved paperwork for filing, and there's a fee, the court the court levies a fee on filing private criminal complaints. It's $39.10. If the complainant is low income, the courts are able to waive part of that fee, but that's completely up to the courts. The DA's office doesn't have anything to do with levying that fee or waiving any part of that fee. Uh, the first court date for private criminal complaints, they used to be about one month in the future uh, from the date of filing. Now it's closer to two months because of the coronavirus. But at the first court listing, which will be in the Criminal Justice Center at 1301 Filbert Street, first listing is presided, presided over by trial commissioner. Trial commissioner will usually issue a mutual stay away order for both parties to stay away from each other while the process is trying to uh, play out and maybe the parties can resolve things. Also at the first listing, the trial commissioner presents the parties with the option to mediate the problem away. If, they, if the parties can mediate the problem away with a third party mediator coming in from the courts to try to work out a contract between the parties, if the problem can be mediated, be mediated away that day, then that's it. The case ends right there and it does, doesn't end up going in front of a judge. But if the parties cannot work things out in mediation, then the case gets another court date a few weeks in the future in front of a municipal court judge to hear the case as an actual trial. Just to back up for a second, if for whatever reason a person comes in to apply for a private criminal complaint, they fill out all our paperwork, they're interviewed by our people, and I decline to approve the private criminal complaint, they can appeal my decision to decline the private criminal complaint. They just sign off on a piece of paper that they want to appeal my decision. Their paperwork is sent up to the president judge of municipal court who will review the application for a private criminal complaint and decide whether or not it should be approved. So I actually don't have the last word on declining a private criminal complaint. Complaint, the person can appeal my decision and the president judge of municipal court will take a look at it. Um, and just to let you know, give you an idea that I, the second slide here is showing a, a lot of what we do. Uh, simple assaults. Um, we do handle some bad checks uh, cases. Uh, a lot of harassment cases going on between neighbors. 
uh, uh, theft if the amount stolen or the value of the item stolen is less than $2,000, terroristic threats, criminal mischief, which is vandalism. We absolutely do not handle protection from abuse orders or restraining orders or landlord tenant issues. We don't handle felonies. We don't handle summaries or civil court matters as a civil dispute between parties or dispute a person's having with uh, maybe a contractor who didn't finish all the work at their, at their home or whatever. We won't get into that kind of thing or, or family court issues. We'll refer those people to the appropriate civil courts or family courts or places like that. So hopefully uh, you will never ever have to deal with the private criminal complaint unit. I hope you don't ever have to, but if you do, that's just a quick overview of what we do. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. And our, our contact. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have a hotline. Since we opened up, we reopened on July 6 after the coronavirus shutdown. We have a hotline that's on turned on 24 hours a day, 215-686-9848. People leave a voicemail. One of our staff will get back to them within two business days. We also have an email address, an email mailbox. It's da underscore pcc at phila.gov. Uh, our, we have our regular uh, business uh, office hours um, uh, lines, the direct lines, people can call in 686-9864 or 9863. I also included there my direct number here at the DA's office, 686-9881, in my email, james.dellafiora at villa.gov. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next uh, presenter and employer is PGW. Uh, and so we're grateful today to have with us uh, representing PGW, uh, Raquel Kelly McDonald. And so we'll ask ma'am that you please uh, mute yourself and turn your screen on, we'll share your slides. Sure, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Raquel Kelly McDonald. I'm director of H HR for PGW. Could we go to the next slide? Um, as you're probably aware, PGW is the natural gas utility uh, within the city of Philadelphia. We've been around for a very long time, over 180 years, which means we offer lots of stability. Uh, we service over 500,000 customers within the city of Philadelphia. Um, and we strive to become the greenest natural gas delivery company in the region. Next slide, please. PGW offers a variety of career options. Uh, these are just a few, um, construction or labor, um, HVAC or uh, you know, plumbing type, accounting and finance, engineering, information technology, obviously uh, human resources and other business disciplines. We have positions um, that are both union covered and non-union. Uh, we also offer a variety of internships at PGW uh, which on a personal note is how I got started at the company a very long time ago. Some of our positions, um, especially in the union area, uh, do require some pre-employment testing. Um, as with other employers, we are administering some of that testing remotely these days. Um, but if there is a person who does not have access to a PC, uh, we will find a way to get you tested. And there are also some other positions that require driver's licenses, especially in that uh, construction labor or the HVAC um, fields, as you would be driving company vehicles around the city of Philadelphia. Um, if you happen to go to our website, pgworks.com slash careers, uh, there is an application for you to complete online. Uh, we just ask that you mention today's job fair, one stop, as your source when you are applying. At uh, PGW, I'm sorry, could you go one, one prior? Thank you. Uh, at PGW, we do have a residency requirement. If you are not a resident of the city of Philadelphia at your time of hire, uh, we do give you 12 months to relocate into the city of Philadelphia and establish residency. Um, it is a great place to work. As I mentioned, I've been there for a very long time, close to 20 years. Um, we offer great benefits. We have an ins health insurance option that is free. Uh, we have free dental insurance with options to upgrade. Uh, we have free parking. We have a pension plan option. And we have a very robust wellness program to offer to our employees, which includes uh, many gyms throughout our facilities. 
uh, once again, um, all of our positions are listed. You can see full job descriptions at our website, pgworks.com slash careers. Um, if you are an applicant who's already applied, um, because we get lots of applicants, we do have a hotline you can call to check on the status of your application. That number is 215-684-6910. Um, again, please mention today's job fair if you are applying or if you do happen to call the hotline. Um, as with other employers, please know that we do get a large volume of applicants. Um, so we unfortunately are not able to reach out to every single person. Uh, that's all I have for today. I hope to see you around at PGW. Thank you so much, Michelle. And also thank you, Natasha, for you both being on from PGW. And uh, man, for those who are watching, you mentioned one stop. As far as employer, I, I heard say that hopefully uh, that's true for all our employers. If you mentioned one stop, um, you're definitely going to get some uh, some preferential treatment. So we appreciate that. Thank well, you. Not so preferential much. treatment. Let's not go that far. Right, me, uh, but we'll definitely take a look. <laughs> we'll and definitely perhaps, take a closer look at your application. <laughs> closer look. That's the best. That's the best. I forgot. It's HR. So that's the that's the better term to use there. Thank exactly. you, Michelle, and thank you, Ms. Uh Our next presenter is going to be uh, Mr. Stanley Williams uh, from. Uh, the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office. He's going to give us a, a, a brief greeting uh, on behalf of uh, Sheriff Rochelle Blau. Stanley. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for having us. Can you hear me, first of all? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so the Sheriff definitely would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for tuning in this afternoon um, here at the new Sheriff's Office, as we like to refer to it. We are the in the process of really getting heavily involved in our community, becoming a community partner uh, here in the city of Philadelphia. I know that major initiatives for us are uh, food giveaways that we invite each and every uh, person listening to us this afternoon to go on our website to you know find locations where we do food giveaways every other Saturday throughout the city of Philadelphia. Also, we're heavily involved in gun lock um, giveaways. Uh, we've given away well over a thousand gun locks uh, since the sheriff has taken office in January. And we're continuing that effort, especially in light of all the serious incidents that have been happening with our children throughout the city of Philadelphia. Um, we also are a, a big initiative for us here is keeping families in their home. And the sheriff is certainly dedicated uh, to making sure that families have the opportunity to stay in their home. So we invite you also to please go to uh, the sheriff's website, um, which is a Philadelphia sheriff, um, excuse me, it's the office of the Philadelphia sheriff, uh, dot com to find out when we have our local sheriff sales. Also, um, if you're having landlord tenant issues, we invite you to please call our office here at 215-686-3530. Um, also lastly, but not least, we are certainly looking for um, well-qualified um, civilians as well as deputies. Um, if you fit our bill and you're looking to make a change and be a part of a change of uh, new policing here in uh, Philadelphia, we certainly invite you to go to uh, the city of Philadelphia's um, web job opportunity website. Also uh, come back to the sheriff's office website to find out when we're doing um, hiring opportunities for both civilians and deputies again. So again, I'm just glad to have this opportunity to be here to speak with you. Um, I look forward to being a part of this team again in the very near future. And I'm asking that everyone please be safe and have a great afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. And please send our hellos to Sheriff Bilal. Uh, our next presenter is Dennis Nicholson. who will be giving a very uh, brief presentation from the Urban League of Philadelphia. Mr. Nicholson, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of uh, Andrea Custis, our CEO of the uh, Urban League of Philadelphia, we'd like to thank the DA's office and everyone that's uh, a, a part of this virtual one-stop job and resource hub. Uh, my name is Dennis Nicholson. I'm one of the directors here at the Urban League of Philadelphia, tasked to continue the advancement of our mission. Uh, the second slide will show our ABCs, which is advocacy and policy. Uh, business and talent diversity, community and economic development, and continuing 
to advance civil rights, social justice, and economic opportunities for African Americans, Latino, and other underrepresented Philadelphians. Uh, we also support many other programs, and I do hope you go to our, our website, which is www.urbanleaguephila.org. Uh, but briefly, we have an entrepreneurship center, uh, and they create workshops and events designed to, to drive, drive uh, job creation. We have housing counseling. Uh, we're helping families build equity and stability, have bank accounts, improve their credit uh, uh, with its first time home buyer program. And uh, we're partnered with four major banks that are helping uh, people that never thought they could get a house, get into a home, uh, youth and education, and of course, health and wellness, wellness uh, educating and empowering our community to adopt a healthy uh, lifestyle. Uh, presently, we're serving breakfasts and lunches, lunches daily to over 6,500 children at 24 different sites across the city. Uh, in relation to this, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can make you feel inferior uh, without your consent. Um, so in the context of this virtual one-stop job and resource center, uh, the Urban League of Philadelphia seeks to empower people who otherwise believe that their race, background, or social status has banned them from ever being able to pursue the American dream. The American dream being the belief that anyone, regardless of where they're from, what they're born from, what their class is, what they were, uh, what class they were, they were born into, can attain their version of success. Uh, the Urban League of Philadelphia's workforce development team, we train, develop, and provide job placement for career seekers. So we need all of you who are employers uh, and all of you who are second chance employers to join us. Send me your contact information. Let me contact you in hiring these men and women without and even with criminal backgrounds. And let's give these individuals seeking the American dream a chance to work hard and achieve more uh, and prove that to themselves uh, that they do indeed matter. Uh, those returning to our communities from jail and prison, we have a four week out for good program. Uh, so again, we look to partner with all of you to be part of these success stories uh, because it does take a village. Uh, so in this program, we incorporate development and reentry practices uh, revolving around social, uh, emotional coaching and therapy, helping find bank accounts, teaching them how to, how to uh, 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 be professional uh, uh, and, uh, on the job force and how to thrive in the community once again. Again, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent and with jobs, we know these men and women will begin to have visions of what can be rather than what can't. So help us help you to help ver a, a whole lot of people. The Urban League of Philadelphia looks forward to speaking with and partnering, partnering with all of you employers in making American dreams possible. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. And please send our, uh, our hellos to Ms. Uh, Custis, President Custis uh, at the Philadelphia. Uh, our next presenter uh, will be from PTTI, uh, Tamara Bowser uh, from PTTI. Just before she presents, I do want to uh, remind everyone that here shortly, our staff, Andreana Barefield and Rayshawn Abdel will be adding uh, the information from the presenters who who have already presented into the comment section, as well as those who will be presenting going forward. Also, uh, this is being streamed on YouTube live. And so feel free to share that uh, with others and just know um, that you can go back and review uh, all the material from today. Uh, glad to have you on, Tamara. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having us. I'm sorry um, my camera isn't working. And I knew I would have to go after that powerful presentation. <laughs> I, was, I was loving that. Um, I'm Tamara Bowser from Philadelphia Technician Training Institute. We are a nonprofit minority owned school, uh, career training school that's on 19th and Girard. We offer six highly in demand programs, um, welding, automotive, electronics. I did send in um, the flyer. I thought uh, you, you guys seen the, there you go. Hey! All right, so yes, we have um, welding automotive, electronics, masonry, plumbing, which are all six months. And then we have a medical instrument sterilization class, which is eight months. You'll be with us for six months. In the last two months, you'll be in an externship. Um, these programs are highly in demand. We have positions waiting. You have the opportunity or the, to, the potential to make between 18 to $32 an hour to start after the training. And we have a career service department that helps with resumes, interview skills, professionalism, coaching, training, and placement. 
We do have a tuition. We have a financial aid department that helps with um, the financial aid for those who qualify. And um, we are partnered with SEPTA, PICO, the water department, PGW, sheet metal workers, you name it. Uh, my job is in marketing community relations. I'm out in the community almost every day. I'm also building relationships with um, different organizations and growing our school. I would love to invite anyone who is interested to come in, take a tour. My name and number is on the bottom. Again, it's Tamara Bowser at 215-200-0944. Just come in, take a tour. If you like what you see, you get started. If you don't, at least you know where we are and what we do. I always encourage people to take the information for those who may benefit. If it's not for you specifically, I'm pretty sure you know somebody that would benefit from a new career. So thank you again, uh, One Stop, for having us. And I'm looking forward to um, hearing from everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tamara. Please send our hellos to Sherman as well. Certainly. <laughs> our next presenter is Roberta uh, Frimpong from Bethany Christian Services. So glad to have you on, Roberta. you need to unmute yourself now. Sorry, guys, I was just a talking. <laughs> My name is Roberta Frimpong from Bethany Christian Services. We are a nonprofit family service organization that began over 25 years ago in 1944 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, with the mission to protect children and empower youth and, in, and strengthen families through social services. In 1980, we opened our Delaware Valley office in Pennsylvania, in which, which enabled us to extend our services to children in the greater Delaware Valley, including minor refugees that needed foster care. Our vision is built upon the understanding that every child deserves to be loved, connected, and empowered with family youth. Currently, there are about 1,200 children in Bethany's U.S. foster care program, which leads our initiatives to community involvement and bringing more awareness for the need of foster parents. Next slide, please. Bethany Foster Care provides services throughout Philadelphia, Delaware County, Montgomery County, and, Bel and uh, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And with our services, we not only do foster care, we do foster care adoption, post adoption services, general trauma-informed counseling and unaccompanied refugee minor foster care services and transitional foster care and accompanied children services and safe families for children services and domestic infant adoption and pre and pregnancy counseling. So with all these services, we wanna ensure that we are taking care of the entire family throughout Pennsylvania and all counties surrounding Philadelphia. Next slide, please. So why be a foster parent? Providing a foster home um, will provide a safe home for a child or family that is in transition. Why Bethany? Bethany Foster Care Services is a Christian-centered agency that demonstrates the ability to service our families um, through the gospel and to demonstrate love. We are also comprehensive. We make sure that we are providing social services within um, the Philadelphia and surrounding agencies for more than 75 years and we are compassionate because our drive um, for the love of God we are called to care for children and when you're with Bethany we ensure that we are providing you um, support as you provide support for your for the children that may be in your community one of the things that we talk about in Bethany is that we strive and believe that it takes a village to raise a child so sometimes there's people in your community that might be um, in transition 
um, in a situation that they may not that they may need support with and may not have support. So we ensure that we can provide that. So with Bethany, if you become a foster parent with us, we provide resources um, for our foster parents with sufficient information, with training. We provide language and cultural specific guidance. We provide respite for if you need a relief for substitute care. We provide 24 hour services. We provide a monthly stipend and ensure that you have medical and legal services if needed in addition to professional develop training. So with that, I wanna share with you our last slide, which will share with you um, our information session. Every since the COVID, um, at, just like everyone else, we have moved to doing everything online and we conduct weekly online information sessions with no commitment from you where we will provide you more information about our services, ways that you can service your community and ways that you can service families in need. So if you are interested, please call to register at 215-376-6200 or register online at bethany.org slash Philadelphia meetings. I will also make this information available in the chat box and our next information session will be occurring Monday, August the 10th at 6 p.m. online. I look forward to meeting you and talking with you and building with you and discovering ways that you can uh, reach your community and impact your community and families in need. Thank you so much, DOA, for having us. Thank you, Roberta. Great to see you. Uh, our next presenter uh, is Kristen uh, from Lowe's, Kristen Mahaffey from Lowe's. I believe there might be several presenters. Eric is on as well, uh, and Tracy. So we'll bring all of you, uh, we'll un you can unmute yourselves, and we'll bring your slides up. Thank you so much. All right. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate being here. Thanks, um, Seth and, and G. Lamar. Uh, we really appreciate being invited to the to this uh, presentation. And um, so, uh, Kristen, Tracy, and myself, we're at Lowe's Home Improvement, and um, we just want to give you, you know, just a little detail on, um, you know, what we do and, and some open uh, job opportunities that we have at our, at our stores. Um, so, of course, Lowe's Home Improvement, uh, one of the major retailers in the United States for uh, lumber, building materials, plumbing supplies, electrical supplies, uh, lawn and garden products, um, and um, you know your major appliances, floor coverings, and 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 such. Um, we're also an essential employer, so uh, we've been open the whole time through the through the pandemic. Um, we're here for our community and for our customers uh, to help them out through all of their needs. Um, and um, so basically, with Lowe's, um, you know, being a, a retail facility, um, we were open um, as early as six a.m. at night, uh, six a.m. in the morning, till we close at ten o'clock at night. And um, so we. We service the public, and um, so we're looking for uh, various positions, including front end, cashier return, sales floor, customer service associates, receiving, stocking, and delivery folks. Um, those can work daytime, and we also have overnight shifts available as well. Um, plumbing and electrical pros, these kind of positions, we're looking for subject matter experts, so somebody with at least one or more years of direct experience in plumbing or electrical. Uh, sales specialist, again, sort of a subject matter expert position, uh, department supervisor and assistant store managers to help run our stores. And um, you can see on the slide, all the locations available. So Kristen, Tracy and myself, we all cover these, these locations in, um, in Philadelphia, the greater Philadelphia area and uh, the South Jersey area. So um, if you have any, any clients or anybody that's interested in working for Lowe's, please contact us. We would definitely like to talk to those, to those interested parties uh, that would like to work for Lowe's. So uh, uh, next slide, please. And um, so this last slide for us, um, just learn more on how to apply. So if you wanna learn more about Lowe's, we would invite you to visit, you can see up on the right hand, right -hand corner, top right hand corner, visit our careers page. It's at jobs.lowe's.com. So that you can, that you can uh, navigate to on your web browser and you'll be able to find out all about Lowe's, Lowe's culture, uh, job openings, benefits, um, you name it, it's, it's on that website. So it's a really, really uh, 
really great website to go to. And also you can explore our job openings. So on the left-hand side, when you navigate to the website, you'll be able to plug in your, your town or your zip code. I always recommend the zip code is the best way. Um, select your search radius and it will display for you the jobs closest to where you live. So um, really, really easy to work with and, and navigate through our jobs.lows.com uh, website. And finally, um, uh, the, bottom, the bottom right corner, um, go ahead and uh, take down our emails if you like. Um, if you have any questions uh, that you'd like to ask us, you know, offline, um, feel free to email any, any of the three of us and we'll be more than glad to talk to you and um, we'll be more than glad to talk about Lowe's. So um, once again, thanks everyone. I really appreciate being a part of this, uh, this, job, this job and resource fair today. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, and thank you as well, uh, uh, Kristen and Tracy. Uh, our next presenter is PHMC, uh, Mr. Joe Jansen. Thank you so much for being on. And uh, your slides will be up on the All right. Thanks so much, uh, G. Lamar. And uh, it's it's definitely an honor and, uh, and a privilege to be amongst um, the employers and the uh, the organizations on here that that are providing just unbelievable services throughout the city of Philadelphia and employment opportunities. Um, so I've been the, the manager of recruitment within the HR office uh, for, uh, for just over two years now. And really my role is to support all of our 350 programs. Um, sorry, I should have put more info on our <laughs> first slide. If you can go to the next one. Um, so Public Health Management Corporation is, is one of the largest and most comprehensive um, nonprofits in the nation. So we have over 350 plus programs and affiliates um, providing a, a number of services from you know, foster care um, to we have um, five health centers, five federally qualified health centers that uh, provide community health care uh, throughout the city and um, really throughout the Philadelphia uh, metro area. And um, we have a research and evaluation program that, uh, that really takes a lot of time to really study what the city, you know, what, what is happening through the city. So within the last couple of years, a big emphasis has been on the opioid epidemic and really the uh, providing services across the board, um, as well as um, our, our, our forensic services program. So Ms. Catherine Addison, uh, one of our directors, of, of FUR actually had asked me specifically to talk about uh, her program. So they provide comprehensive services that reduce criminal recidivism through behavioral health treatment and related to services under um, criminal justice supervision as an alternative to incarceration, um, which is obviously a, a very important thing throughout the city. And right now they're currently looking for case managers. Um, now these positions do require a bachelor's degree and uh, one year placement experience, but they, they do have um, currently are hiring for those roles. So if, if you or you know, someone you know is looking to get into you know, case management and provide that type of, uh, that type of support, um, please send me an email or you can look at our, our job board. Um, so the next slide has the link of where our job board is. So as of right now, we currently have 166 active postings that are up and uh, we have continued um, sorry, I think I've got a, if you can go one more. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry. You got it right. So phmc.org slash site slash careers is, um, I, I moderate that job board on really on the regular. So each day, um, whether it's taking postings down that are no longer active. And uh, one thing, I mean, throughout COVID, um, we have continued to make hires and we've continued to provide services. So if, if anyone ever has questions or just wants to have a conversation, you know, just about career path and looking for a place to start off, or, you know, I, I know we've had a, you know, a resume questions or have applied to postings. I think one of our other, um, one of our hiring managers on here at asked and talked about, um, you know, we do have a lot with that many positions, you know, maybe someone has applied and hasn't heard a reply back. I can help facilitate that for you. I, I do recommend, and taking a look at you know jobs that do align with experience, um, and we do have you know data entry clerks, we do have um, you know admin assistants as well. So these we still are hiring and, and do have positions for non degree non degreed as well. So kind of a the whole plethora across the board. So again, thank you to G Lamar, and uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, be with you all today. 
great to have you. Thank you again, uh, Joe, for, for being on. Uh, we're going to move into our next uh, block of presenters, but just before we, we do that, really excited today to have with us uh, several community leaders uh, who will kind of pop on during our uh, presentation today just to uh, share a word of inspiration and empowerment uh, to those who are seeking opportunities, uh, both jobs and resources. And today we have with us Reverend Mike, uh, Michael Robinson uh, from the Greater Enon Baptist Church in North Philadelphia. Glad to have you on, Reverend. Thank you so much. I appreciate the invite today. The floor is yours. Oh, awesome. So I was asked to provide some inspirational uh, message today for those that are job seekers looking for work. And my encouragement to you is that don't allow job search fatigue to settle in. You can get so discouraged by having some doors closed in your face, but the reality is you're going to get more no's than you are yeses. So you have to develop some thick skin when it comes to your job so to realize that you must persevere you must keep punching through until you get that opportunity that you're looking for and along the way there may be opportunities that might be stepping stones for those larger and more lofty opportunities that you're seeking so you may have a goal of a salary of 55 70 85 thousand dollars a year but that $45,000 a year job might be the position that might be giving you the autonomy, the leadership, the um, high caliber skill sets that you need to make that quantum leap down the road for those other loftier opportunities. So keep that in mind. And then here's another important aspect of the job search. It's not always about the money. It's about the quality of opportunities employers are willing to give you. And it's also about the benefits. Sometimes we take for granted the benefits that employers are, are providing. Now, when it comes to showcasing yourself, when we participate in these kinds of virtual opportunities to meet with employers, it's important to make sure that you have your resume handy so that as you're speaking to employers about what you bring to the table in terms of your skills, your strengths, and other assets that you bring, make sure that you have your resume handy so that if by chance you fall off by the wayside in your conversation, going off on a tangent, you can quickly look at your resume, get back on track, speak to the points that need to be spoken to, and keep it moving. Also, when it comes to this job search effort, your resume, for the most part, is going to showcase who you are before an employer gets to even meet you. So before we even get to this kind of a venue, and that's why I appreciate District Attorney Larry Krasner and, and, and G. Lamar Stewart for pulling these kinds of things together, because these are the opportunities where you get to network with employers that other people don't have access to. Here's where I'm going with that. In this venue, you're meeting with different employers. Make a good impression so that when you follow up, and it's important to follow up after these kinds of gatherings within a 48 hour time period, one to two days, follow up with those contacts to have one-on-one -on -one conversation so that here it is, you can distinguish yourself from the pack of applicants that are applying for that same job. The one thing that you have over all other applicants is that you were given access today to these decision makers from different employers that other applicants didn't. And so use these kinds of venues to your advantage. Connect with G. Lamar Stewart and, and, and Seth Myers and the other contacts in the DA's office that help you come together in these kinds of venues because if there's an employer you like, those individuals can be, here it is, the conduit to connecting you with those decision makers after the fact. Now, when it comes to email and electronic communications, one of the things you don't want to do is to make the error of sending your resumes and sending your cover letters with an email address that's kind of jokey joke. Um, I'll give you an example, an email address that might say um, Big Jimmy at uh 166 at gmail.com or hot lips betty at aol.com those kinds of jokey joke emails 
depending on what company you're sending it to, if it's a very conservative company, they may not take you seriously. So keep that as your personal email and create an email account with your name that you can send those professional kinds of communications like your resume and cover letter with a professional email handle. And it's also important to be mindful that when you're communicating with employers, understand we're newsy people. And as we um, set up interviews with you, we're going to go on social media to see what your presence is like out there, out there in cyberspace. So if you have some stuff out there that's questionable, um, and maybe you're not even doing anything, maybe you're just sitting among others who are doing the goofy stuff, like holding 40s or smoking a blunt, or maybe you know doing some other things that could put you in a compromising position, you're guilty sometimes by association. And again, if you're dealing with conservative organizations, by seeing those kinds of um, nefarious social media um, content, they may not um, be interested in you because it might taint their reputation. That's how they're thinking. So be careful of what you have on your social media platforms. And, and, and if you don't have LinkedIn as an account, get on LinkedIn. That's a professional social uh, media network platform that most recruiters are, are locked in on, linkedin.com. And then I just want you to be mindful. As you're talking to employers, keep this in mind. Your file cabinet of information should be info about your accomplishments, info about your relative experience, information, here it is, about what skills and special assets you bring to the table. If you can speak powerfully to those three things as you engage with these employers, you'll be off the hook. Those are my tips. I wish all of you the best of luck. Please don't let job search fatigue set in. You got to keep persevering until you punch through for that opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mike Robinson. I know I mentioned he's a, a pastor of uh, Greater Enon Baptist Church, but he's also the director of hiring and outreach uh, for Temple University's Fest North Philadelphia Workforce Initiative. So thank you so much for being on, Mike. I appreciate those words. Our next presenter uh, and employer is from Wonder Spring Early Education, uh, Trisha McDevitt-Ortiz. I think I said uh, that. So glad to have you on. Thank you so much. I'm really appreciative to the district attorney's office for having us today and also just overall their positivity during this pandemic and the protests. And I want to add today, I made an offer to someone who found out about our job opportunity at last month's virtual uh, job stop. So very appreciative of that. Um, so I'm from Wonderspring. Uh, we are a nonprofit. We've been in existence for over uh, 50 years and we provide uh, childcare services and school age services in the region, over 10 locations um, in Philadelphia and then right outside in um, Montgomery County. Uh, so we're in the childcare industry. Uh, we all know how critical the child care industry is to getting uh, our country back to work. Um, we, uh, like many child care uh, programs, shut our doors back in March. Um, however, we're very proud to say that we had all of our teachers transition to working remotely, which isn't an easy thing to do since our business is working with children directly. Um, and we didn't lay anyone off. So we're really proud of that fact. And during the shutdown, um, we've worked, our leadership team uh, uh, worked tire, tire, tirelessly to um, make sure we were coming back following strict uh, CDC health and safety guidelines and having strong policies and procedures in place to keep our staff and of course our children uh, as safe as possible. Um, so we have a variety of open openings. Um, with different uh, levels of experience and credentials. Um, all of our positions do require staff having a current health assessment with the TB test, uh, as well as current uh, uh, child abuse clearances and um, criminal clearances and FBI clearances. And also um, 
the National Sexual Offender Registry clearance. Um, so as I said, you can see up there the variety of uh, jobs we have open. We always have a great demand for assistant teachers. Um, <clears throat> it's sort of our entry level position. Uh, and if you have uh, some experience working with children, which could be you work in a summer camp for a few summers, uh, paid babysitting, that would qualify. And uh, our assistant teacher roles are great opportunities for people who love working with children, but also um, anyone who has aspirations of working with children in the future, aspiring elementary teachers, aspiring social workers, uh, you know, folks wanting to get into social services, working with children. It's an awesome um, training ground for you. Um, so uh, you can move on to the next slide, thanks. Uh, so why join us? Um, we have, we offer generous paid time off. Uh, we offer affordable, comprehensive medical benefits, two different medical plans, two different dental plans, vision, opportunities for professional growth, uh, a professional, positive, and collaborative atmosphere. Um, uh, we have tuition discount partnerships with uh, Eastern University um, and other um, other avenues for folks to go back to school. We offer a 401k retirement savings plan with a significant employer match. Um, we offer uh, employer paid basic life insurance and disability insurance and a robust uh, wellness program. So uh, I would encourage you to uh, uh, visit our career center on our homepage please feel free to reach out to me and uh, call me about our services um, and our opportunities. And thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, uh, Tricia McDevitt Ortiz. And thank you for all that you're doing uh, at Water Spring. As always, send our hellos to Zakia Boone. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so uh, we have our next presenter and all of our presenters are doing a great job. And so we just wanted to try to stay on time here. We're asking that, uh, that we all stay to the uh, time uh, slots that were provided just so that we can get to uh, the rest of our employees, or our presenters and employers. Um, our next presenter is David Burns, Officer David Burns from the Philadelphia Police Department, uh, their recruitment uh, unit. David, you're up and please unmute yourself, sir. Dave, you have to unmute yourself, man. Sorry. Uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Burns, or Police Officer Burns with the Philadelphia Police Recruiting Unit. Um, I just want to say thank you, G. Lamar. Thank you, Seth. And uh, uh, Mike Robinson, thank you. You hit the nail right on the head. Um, so we are currently recruiting. Um, we did just have a recruitment drive close uh, last month. It closed on, uh, like, last week, July 31st. Uh, there will probably be another one that will open back up uh, in about a month or so. Um, the only thing is with the whole COVID-19, we kind of have um, the, the few groups of applicants who are kind of sitting and waiting. But as soon as the city goes back into the green phase, uh, there'll be a new plan in place and we will start contacting applicants who applied in prior recruitment drives. Um, right now, the current salary for the police department is 56000 and some change. So the way the process works is now you apply for the police department, you go to the city's website to apply. Um, it takes a couple months for the city's human resources department to rank and score everyone on their application. Now, the minimum requirements for the police department is a high school diploma or equivalent. So you apply um, with a high school diploma or equivalent, um, you're ranked and scored a couple months later. And then there's ways to receive points on the application itself. Um, for college, you'll get points on the application. Um, for, for military, there's a criteria for community service. There's ways to receive points if you're bilingual. Um, so what happens is a couple months after you apply, you'll get a ranking and a score. Then fast forward about six months after you apply, we contact you to take a reading comprehension test and a physical agility test. Uh, 
unlike years in the past where we used to offer a civil service exam, there is no more civil service exam. You take a Nelson Denny reading comprehension test. As long as you pass it, you move on to do the physical agility test, which is the same day. That's somewhere where I come into port. I'll send you the information for both since I'm one of the recruiters. Um, once you pass the physical agility portion, you'll move into the background part of the process. Generally, that takes about two to three months to get through. There's an initial interview with the background investigator where we'll give you a booklet that has to be filled out. It's called a, a personal data questionnaire booklet. And then we'll give you an interview checklist. It's a list of documents that you'll bring to the, to the background. If everything checks out well with the initial interview, you'll start processing through our process. Again, it takes about two to three months to get through. Uh, there's the next part would be medical uh, polygraph. There's a two part psychological test. There's an MMPI, which is a psychological test you would take on a computer. And then lastly, there's a one on one interview you would do with a psychologist. Um, if you get through all of that, and your file is approved. You'll you'll be eligible for the next academy class that we put in. Uh, in the past, we were putting them in every three months. But right now, the, the, again, the process seems to be on hold. Uh, right now, the academy is nine months. It's Monday through Friday, eight to four. You don't live at our police academy. You would just commute back and forth. Um, you are getting paid and full free medical benefits the day you start. So right now, our starting salary just to go through the police academy is 56000 and some change. Um, once you graduate the police academy, um, you'll go into one of the 22 police districts in the city. Um, and then after a year being a police officer, you're eligible to start taking promotional tests for detective or corporal. After two years, you're eligible to take a promotional test for sergeant. Um, the city, one of the benefits is we, we um, the city offers partial tuition reimbursement. So just for graduating the police academy, there are um, institutions that are local that will give you up to 51 credits towards your bachelor's for having no prior college. Uh, just for completing the police academy, since, since it is considered accredited, um, and then again, the city does partial tuition reimbursement. And then a lot of these institutions will give us a police discount. So we're big on pushing for you to further your education. Um, yeah, I mean, so we have a dedicated website for the police department, uh, joinphillypd.com. Um, any other questions, you can call us 215-683-COPS. Um, my dedicated email is david.d.burns at phila.gov. Um, and then if you just want to view our website, it's joinphillypd.com. Um, again, so you won't be able to apply until the next time the recruitment drive or, or the applications are listed. Um, th but if you want to reach out to me in the meantime, um, again, joinphillypd.com um, is our dedicated website, or you can contact myself. Uh, thank you, and I appreciate all your time. Officer Burns, we appreciate you, and thank you always for uh, all the work you do. Please send our hellos to Captain McCoy. And thank you. Um, our next, our next uh, presenter will, uh, from the city of Philadelphia's um, uh, HR uh, department, uh, Julia Jackson. Uh, we will uh, mute you, or if you're gonna mute yourself, I'm gonna put your slides up. Uh, you're still muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we got you. Okay, great. Um, so hello everyone. My name is Julia Jackson and I'm with the city of Philadelphia. Um, so, as you may or may not know, we are one of the largest employers for the city of Philadelphia. Um, so we hire almost 30,000 employees um, in hundreds of different positions. So as you just heard with the Philadelphia Police Department, so we hire for police, fire, administrative, clerical, medical positions, skilled trades such as electricians, um, mechanics, plumbers, engineers, accounting. So if you're looking for a position, um, there's a good chance that we do have it. Um, I would also like to emphasize, so one of the great things about working for city government is that we have a wonderful and comprehensive benefits plan that includes health insurance, um, dental insurance, vision, vacation, sick time, a pension, as well as a deferred compensation, if that's something that you're looking for. Um, can you go to the next slide? Next slide. Thank you. Um, so just a little bit about us. So we hire, so the uh, Office of Human Resources hires for both civil service and exempt positions. So before I get into some of the positions that we currently have open, um, I just wanted to provide a little bit of information about what it means to be civil service versus exempt. So civil service positions, um, they specifically follow the rules of the Civil Service Commission. And one of those um, rules is that in order to become a government employee, um, you have to take an examination, whether that be um, in person, virtually, or through a review of your work history. That's something that we call a training and experience evaluation. 
Um, I just want to point out that the majority of the positions with the city um, are civil service. Um, those exempt positions that we do have just follow your typical hiring process. So you send in your um, application or, or you send in an application and a resume and then someone will reach out to you. Um, for the civil service positions, what will happen is you will apply on our website, put in your resume and your information, and then you'll get contacted from there if you've been approved to continue on with the process or if your application has stopped there. Um, so on this slide that we have here, so these are some of the available positions that we currently have. So on the left hand side, you'll see some of the positions that are currently open, such as Forensic Investigator 1, HVAC Mechanic, Industrial Process, Machinery Mechanic, and Machinery and Equipment Mechanic 2. These are all positions that are currently open and they close on August 14th. Um, the positions that we have on the right side are all positions that we're, um, are going to be opening up this Monday, August 10th, um, and most of them are open for about two weeks. Some of them are open longer, three weeks or four weeks. Um, so one of the positions that we have that are going to be opening up is healthcare aid bilingual, and those are specifically for um, people who speak Spanish, um, construction projects technician one, um, and airport communications center operator one. That's also bilingual. Um, can you go to the next slide? Um, so as I mentioned before, all of our jobs and positions and their job descriptions are at our website at phila.gov slash personnel. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything, or just general questions about type of about some of the types of jobs that we have, um, please reach out to us. Um, on our website, we have um, a list of all, a lot of all our contacts, um, the contacts of those who are doing those job positions and such. And then we also have a really cool feature that's on our website that if you see a position that you like, but it's not yet open, you can put, give us your contact information and your email. And what will happen is once that job position does open up, you'll, have the, um, you'll receive an email giving you an opportunity to apply to that position. So that's a really cool feature that um, we have. So yeah, so as I mentioned again, my name is Julia Jackson and my contact information is there at the bottom. It's just julia.jackson at phila.gov. And I'm looking at mainly our, um, as I mentioned, those civil service positions. Um, and then Chris Nelson, he is also works in, in the Office of Human Resources. And his email is chris.nelson at phila.gov. So again, if you have any questions or comments, um, feel free to shoot us an email. Um, and also check out our website. We have contact numbers and any information that you all might have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, for all that you all do. Um, our next presenter uh, is Aviation Institute of Maintenance, Cindy Fieldman. Glad to have you on, Cindy. Your slides up. Please unmute yourself. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. Awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you, Gila Moore. Thank you to everybody at the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office for having us here today. Um, my name is Cindy Feldman. I'm the Community Outreach Representative for the Aviation Institute of Maintenance, and we are a trade school. Uh, we prepare individuals for career in aircraft maintenance. We're a federally funded school in a federally regulated industry, and we teach uh, students how to build, repair, and maintain various aircraft, such as planes, jets, drones, helicopters, pretty much anything that flies. They learn about the airframe, the pistons, hydraulics, pretty much everything about an aircraft from the inside out. And this training prepares them for the airframe and power plant certification issued by the Federal Aviation Administration. So with that credential, they can work anywhere all over the world on any type of aircraft as long as it is owned by the United States with lots of fantastic career opportunities to work for not only the major airlines but the regional and commuter lines, uh, private jet companies, uh, vintage aircraft, cargo carriers, aircraft manufacturers. Um, we are also an ACCSC accredited school and an FAA approved A&P Part 147 campus. We do offer day or night classes. Financial aid is available for those who qualify. Job placement assistance and student services are also available. And if anybody is interested and wants to learn more about an exciting career in aviation, they can contact me at 267-857-1787 uh, to schedule a career planning session, or they can contact me via email at C-O-R-A-M-P at aviationmaintenance.edu. 
Thank you so much, Cindy. Appreciate you very much. Our next uh, presenter uh, it is Drew Adair from Year Up. Drew, please unmute yourself. Glad to have you here again. All right, great. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you, uh, G. Lamar and Seth, uh, District Attorney's Office, Community Affairs. Appreciate it. Uh, so my name is Drew Adair, I, officially Andrew, but please call me Drew. Uh, I'm the Recruitment Enrollment Manager for Year Up Greater Philadelphia. Uh, and Europe is a corporate focused workforce development program that has actually been around nationally uh, for 20 years. Uh, we are outside of Philadelphia. There are 26 other cities uh, in which uh, the program runs. Uh, we empower young adults ages 18 to 30 to move from minimum wage to meaningful careers at top companies in less than one year. Now, I'm going to pause there for a second because our program has actually changed in that the new model, which begins October 13th, is now one that is more flexible and streamlined and actually runs for seven months, uh, allowing people to move in that direction up to meaningful careers in a shorter span of time. Uh, and when I say top companies, uh, we are talking about Fortune 100, Fortune 400. Uh, our, our corporate partners right now include Amazon, JP Morgan Chase, Merck, Wells Fargo Bank, Bank of America, uh, Prudential, et cetera. Uh, and at Europe, we really work to equip talented and motivated young adults uh, with the skills, experience, and support to launch a professional career. Again, we are corporate focused. We are talking working in the business world, in the corporate world. Our employee graduates earn an average starting wage of $21. Now, oop, if we can still keep the first, thank you. Uh, an average starting wage of $21 an hour, $21 an hour, which is equivalent to $42,000 per year. And that is not necessarily including those who are coming out in the uh, tech world, uh, where those salaries can be a little bit higher. Uh, now, now we can go to the uh, next slide, please. All right, so as I said, we are starting our new program model uh, in October, and it is a seven month model instead of a, a full year. Uh, phase one, the learning and development is three months and it is a uh, almost completely virtual. Uh, it is self-paced, uh, um, the approximate amount of work in, in, of those classes and that education and training is approximately 25 hours per week. Uh, and then uh, phase two, uh, which will begin in January, is the corporate work immersion, otherwise known as internships. Uh, that is four months. Now that is where the full-time commitment, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to five, uh, must be made with our corporate partners. Again, the training and development, learning and development is three months self-paced part-time. The uh, work immersion or internship is four months, uh, and that is full-time. Now phase three is, is how we work with our alums uh, for the literally for the rest of their careers, including uh, job networking and placement uh, with um, additional uh, business expertise, resume help, interviewing help, job connections, etc. Uh, we are very, very big on supporting all of the students that are in our program, uh, and that includes our educational stipends, which are primarily through uh, that um, internship phase. Our private teachers and coaches uh, will be working with our students, particularly during those first three months. Uh, guidance is constant. Uh, we believe feedback is a gift. It is constant both between staff and students, but also student to student and student to staff. Uh, we feel that that feedback does go both ways and is equal among all, all of our participants. Our partnership agreement includes our corporate mentors so that every student in our program is able to work with a mentor coming out of the corporate world uh, that will work with them one on one to help them understand uh, what they need to do to thrive and survive in the business culture, in the business world. The training that first three months are academic classes and professional skills, uh, which absolutely include uh, those essential or soft skills, uh, business communications, business writing, uh, all of those things, networking uh, that are important to rising up in the corporate world. And then our experience uh, in particular is the hands-on training through the corporate work immersion. Uh, again, that is the internship phase. Now, one of the most important things about this program and how dedicated our corporate partners are is that students who make it through the application process, this program is completely free, 100% free, okay? All right, now we can go to the uh, final slide, please. All right, this is my contact information here in Philadelphia. Again, just, uh, I can go by Drew, uh, Recruitment and Enrollment Manager. My number is 215-253-5544 or aadair at europe.org. 
And what you can do when you get in touch with me, I can help you set up with a formal information session, uh, which is virtual, uh, which will give you the information that you need. It's about 45 minutes long, and that will move you into the formal application process. Uh, and I'll, we'll certainly be explaining all of those things that you'll need uh, to apply. They include some of the standard things like resume, uh, cover letter, personal statement, et cetera. Uh, so uh, feel free to get in touch with me, again, either phone or email at any time, and uh, we can help move you through this. Again, our next class starts in October, and we certainly hope to see you. Once again, thank you, G. Lamar and Seth. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Drew. Uh, our next uh, presenter is uh, Trooper Chen from the Pennsylvania State Police. Glad to have you, Drew. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I, I would like to thank um, everyone at the uh, District Attorney's Office for uh, connecting employer with job seeker, um, do, especially during this difficult time where uh, we can physically meet one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we are currently um, hiring for, for a trooper position. Um, the current, uh, uh, the requirements are um, age, you have to be between 21 and 39 and you need uh, 60 college credits, all majors accepted, or if, or you may qualify for a military or other law enforcement waiver. Um, and you need to be a US citizen. Uh, our current starting salary is a little bit over 63,000 for uh, 2020. Um, upon graduation, a uh, member will receive full medical benefit, which will cover the uh, dependent. Uh, our selection process are lengthy and we are accepting application as we speak. The deadline to sign up is September 9th, 2020. And applicants will need to complete the written examination prior to the end of September of this year. Um, we, uh, there's a lot of information in reference to our selection process. I encourage everyone uh, who is interested in applying, uh, please contact me directly or your local uh, recruiter. Um, my number is on the website and, the, and email um, is at patrooper.com. Um, there you go. Phone number is 717-614-7958. Um, anyone with any questions, uh, whether it's um, academy training or lengthy selection process, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Um, we also have other civilian positions, which is uh, on, the, on the website, um, as well as another, uh, we also have another law enforcement position called liquor enforcement officer position. And that, uh, that position do not have maximum age requirement. So anybody who is slightly uh, older than 39, uh, you may consider that position as well. So I can, I can be reached as, like again, 717-614-7958. Uh, Anytime anyone has a question about the, the job, the process, please reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trooper Chin. Uh, our next presenter from Harcum College, is Jose Benitez. Hello, my name is, do you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm sorry. Hello, my name is Jose Benitez. I'm the admissions and recruitment specialist for Harcum College at Congresso. We're located at 2800 uh, North American Street. That's American and Somerset Street. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Uh, so yeah, so over at uh, Harcum at Congresso, we have an associate's degree program. It offers four different majors early child education, criminal justice, human services. And actually we don't offer business management at our site. However, we could connect you to another site that does have business management, but you can sign up through us if you need to. Um, and with early child education, we actually got approved from the TEACH grant uh, recently, which means we offered a, the TEACH grant now. So anyone, any, anyone who works for like a childcare facility uh, you could be eligible for the TEACH grant and that could cover up to your whole tuition, which means you get to go to school for free. You get your associate's degree for free, which is uh, which is really good. Um, 
yeah, so there's that. And then, yeah, early child education, human services, those are our biggest draws over at uh, Harkham at Congresso. So usually our main focus is there, but we, you know, we're there for criminal justice as well. Um, some of the services that, you know, we have available, uh, assistance, navigating college and financial aid systems from enrollment to graduation. Uh, we're going to be by your side through the whole process, all the way from enrollment. We're going to help you sign up, you know, for financial aid, the, the grants, the loans, whatever you need. We're going to be right by your side. We're going to walk you through the whole process. Uh, so the thing about Harcum at Congresso is that, like, it's a two-person staff. It's just me and my boss. And pretty much, like, between us and the students, it's like one big family. And we're going to help you with whatever you need, whether it's um, you need resources or you need help with schoolwork or you need help with financial aid and navigating all of that or contact the staff, whatever the case may be, we're gonna be by your side through that whole process. Uh, we do offer transportation assistance for anyone that needs it. Um, we offer, you know, token, or we don't offer tokens anymore. We have like set the key passes now where you could just, you know, slide it and just go in. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, can you go to the next slide. Okay, yeah, so for if you want more information, our contact information is right there. Miriam Figueroa is the site coordinator. That's my boss. Um, and then my information is right there. My name's Jose Benitez. If you need more information, just contact us anytime. We, uh, we're holding open houses every Thursday at 5 p.m. except for the 20th of this month. Um, there's going to be one in 20 minutes. Um, and if you want that information, you could go to congresso.net or you could contact our information right there. And um, you could register for our open house and you can come get more information. And I welcome. Uh, yeah, I think you muted. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, where, where'd you lose me at? Uh, just you can see where you are right now. Okay, yeah. So, like I was saying, um, if you guys are interested in the uh, open house employees or attendees or employers or whatever the case may be, feel free to stop by. Um, for employers, if you have any um, need for like staff or anything like that, that you need like, you know, students who are in a certain major, you know, whether it be early child education, criminal justice, or human services, you can feel free to reach out to us. We could reach out to our students and we could uh, see if we can connect you with them to get you those employees. Um, yeah, and like I was saying, we have an open house at 5 p.m. It'll be right after this. You can get that information on congresso.net. That's congresso of 1S, or you can feel free to contact one of us, and we can send you the link for that open house. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you, Jose. Appreciate you for being on. Uh, no our next presenter, and just to mention, we are at, uh, on, in the final stretch here uh, of, of presenters. We're in our third block now. Uh, so our next, our next presenter and employer uh, is the Urban Affairs Coalition, Ivory Scott. You're gonna mute yourself, we'll put your slides on. Good afternoon, I'm trying to put up my camera. It won't let me, but okay. Ivory, we have your slides. You may have to speak up just a little bit. We're having a hard time hearing you. Is that better? Much better. Okay, great. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ivory Scott. I am the Human Resources Intern at the Urban Affairs Coalition. UAC is a nonprofit organization that unites governments, businesses, neighborhoods, and individual initiatives to improve the quality of the life um, in the greater Philadelphia region, build wealth in the urban communities, and solve emerging issues. So we are a fiscal sponsor for over 80 plus programs in the Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia area who are also nonprofits and we help them so they can focus on their mission and their delivery and bold initiatives in their communities. Currently, there's over 50 job opportunities at the Urban Affairs Coalition, as you can see. Um, so we have a senior accountant position at the Urban Affairs Coalition currently. We also have a new program, which is the Philadelphia Department of Public Health and their contact tracing division. So they're hiring. We have Center for Hope hiring self one day at a time, also known as ODAT, and the Youth Outreach Adolescent Community Awareness Program, which is OYO ACAP. We have full-time positions, which are offered benefits. We have part-time positions that work um, less than 35 hours a week. And we also have seasonal positions with the opportunity of becoming um, part-time or full-time in the future. 
just to give you a little background on myself, I was in a seasonal position with the Urban Affairs Coalition last summer. I worked with their summer youth employment program. I was their HR intern. And then um, I came to be permanently their part-time HR intern. So there are definitely opportunities to grow at the Urban Affairs Coalition. And I encourage you to visit our website and check out our job opportunities tab to view all our current open positions that we have and view the job descriptions. And you can also explore our program partners page if you would like more information on their direct impact in their communities. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. As you can see, my phone, my office number and my email address is on the screen and our website, which is www.uac.org slash job opportunities. And here at the Urban Affairs Coalition, we are driving change from the ground up. And thank you, Dee Lamar and Seth, for inviting us again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, our next presenter uh, will be my independence at home. Uh, Romaine Jones-Wise uh, is the presenter. Please unmute yourself. We have your slides up. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you again for the invitation, G. Lamar and Seth. Very happy to be here today. Um, I am Romaine Jones Wise, HR Director at My Independence at Home. We are Philadelphia's premier home care agency, female minority and veteran owned and operated, and we thrive to make sure our caregivers have a wonderful, wonderful employment opportunity. Um, we are presently looking for certified nursing assistants, certified home health aides, and personal care attendants. We are based out of Philadelphia. However, we service the surrounding five counties, Bucks, Chester, Delaware, Montgomery, and Philadelphia County. We are looking for compassionate, reliable aides that have a heart for this work. Um, we have day positions, evening positions, overnights, weekends, on call, you name it, we have it. And we are um, excited to um, expand and grow. Um, we currently have about 220 caregivers actively on roster. We have ample caseloads and we are picking up new cases. We care for the elderly and those with physical uh, disabilities, as well as individuals that have been diagnosed with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Our benefit package is robust. Um, we offer, you know, um, sign-on bonuses for our CNA and HHAs. Our application process is very easy. You can apply online directly through our website. The application takes, the initial application takes about two to three minutes to complete. And uh, from that point, you would be contacted by myself or one of our HR staff members. And everything is done virtually. You don't have to come to our office. We do interviews, orientation, and the entire onboarding process remotely. Um, so we make it very easy for you. Um, everything is done electronically. And we are very flexible with orientation schedules to make sure you have all the tools and resources that you need. Um, to roster with us, you will need to have a current um, PPD screening, which can be by way of a two-step PPD, a chest x-ray or a TB gold test um, and a work physical. All the other um, details that you will need can be um, supplied during your interview process. The best way to reach us is through our HR general mailbox, which is monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And our main office number is listed there on the screen. You can reference the uh, job virtual job fair today as your point of reference. And we will make sure that you have an immediate follow-up within 24 hours. Um, it's a great place to work. I've been with the agency now for almost a year and a half. I love what we do and we strive to make sure we bring impactful care to the community by allowing people to stay in their homes and connect it with their families and their friends. Um, home care is the alternative to having to go into nursing homes and institutions to receive care. So it's a rewarding job opportunity. It's opportunity for growth and development. And I look forward to interviewing and talking with as many um, that are interested in the opportunity. Thank you so much for having us today. And I look forward to the applications to come. 
thank you so much for being on today, Ms. Jones Wise. Uh, always glad to have you with us. Um, as we continue, just before we go to our next uh, in, in, uh, employer, we're really grateful today to have with us our very own Philadelphia District Attorney, Larry Krasner, uh, who will give a quick remark to uh, those who are both job seekers, but also to our, uh, our presenters today, our employers and our social service providers. DA Krasner, glad to have you, sir. Thank you so much for giving me a to chime in here. And uh, thank you so much for the last presentation. That was fascinating. I hope a lot of you take advantage of it. The One Stop Resource Hub is, in our opinion, part of the solution. It is a grassroots part of the solution. It addresses needs. It addresses opportunities for everyone, for people who have been victims of crime, people who've witnessed crime, people who just live in neighborhoods, people who are coming out of custody. It addresses all of that. It, it goes in the direction we have to go, which is towards preventing crime in addition to the enforcement that goes around crime. So I thank you all for not letting a pandemic stop you, not letting economic, I don't wanna say disaster, but economic challenges stop you. I thank you all for not letting civil unrest or anything else stop you because this is the kind of work that cannot stop. This is how we get things done. So thank you very much for participating. Thank you very much for offering opportunities and services. And thank you very much for attending and doing everything that you can to get us all on a better path. Thanks again. Thank you, DA Krasner. Uh, our next presenter is Karen Hessett from Clarify. Karen, your slides are coming up on the screen. And you can unmute yourself. Okay. I'm done. Thank you so much for having for having me and um, I'm Karen Hassett. I'm the financial education manager at Clarify. So uh, what is, oh, the next slide, please. G. Lamar, next slide. Okay, hold on. So uh, thank you, I'm sorry. So anyway, so what are we? We're, um, we are a, um, a, re Regional nonprofit. Um, we we are we've been in Philadelphia for over 50 years. At, we started out as a credit counseling agency. So today we're really focused on empowering individuals and families to make informed financial decisions as they navigate life stages and pandemics. Um, so how do we do this? Well, what we do is we we do one-on-one -on -one counseling, and it's. Right now it's all virtual and it is free and we do debt, credit, budgeting, whatever you're looking for, pre-purchase counseling, and it's all free. We also do education and we'll do, we have webinars that we offer to the community as well as um, if your organization, for those organizations who are out there, if you're interested in having a Clarify um, educator, do a webinar, please reach out to us. You can, you can find out how to do that on our website. We also have great, a great program, a boot camp program. That's a six month program and individuals who participate in this program, um, they, they do, they have two one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions, one in the beginning, one in the end, and then they are paired with a, I call it an accountability coach. And that's someone who is with them by their side as they try to achieve the financial goals they set for themselves. We also administer a, a bunch of other special programs, the family self-sufficiency, um, the repair, renew and restore program that's Philadelphia. And we also are involved with financial wellness and counseling at, the, at CareerLink. And all of these are, are absolutely virtual right now. So next slide, please. Uh, I won't take up much of your time. We're, um, we are here for the community, whether you're actually in, the, in Philadelphia or if you are in the surrounding counties. Our counselors, as I said, they're virtual. They can help you with budgeting, especially at this time. It might be a nice nice time to talk to someone about emergency budgeting. They can, they can help you with getting your credit in shape and get your credit score up getting debt under control, and any resources right now that are available either federally, state, or in your municipalities, uh, we're, we're there for you. We can provide you with those resources. To schedule an appointment, visit, uh, either you can visit myclarify.org where you'd have to create an account, or you can just simply call our 800 number at that 800-989-9000. 
1-800-242-2227. And um, just go to our website, clarify.org. We have great resources. And also you can see what sort of educational um, offerings we have either right now at the community or if your organization is interested in providing them uh, to employees or staff where we can do that as well. So I want to thank you and, um, and best of, of luck to everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Karen. Our next uh, presenter is Accu Staffing, Lori Simcoe. Uh, if you can unmute yourself, your slides are up next. Hi, good afternoon, and thank you so much for inviting me to participate in this very special event. My name is Lori Simcoe. I'm the Corporate Director at Accu Staffing Services. What is a staffing service? We employ people and put them to work at our uh, customer site in various types of jobs. Uh, we were founded in 1979 by Doris Dam. She was working at an employment agency at the time calling customers and spoke to one of her customers, asked if they had a need, and he said, you know, Doris, I don't need someone permanently, but I could use someone to fill in while my receptionist is on maternity leave. That was her light bulb moment. So she started the business from her dining room table at her home in Morristown, New Jersey. Today, we're considered the premier, the premier staffing agency in the area, just recently named in Forbes magazine as one of the top staffing agencies in the country, one of only two in New Jersey. We are um, family owned and operated. The whole damn family, if you will, works here um, at corporate headquarters. So we have three generations of dams working at our organization. We pay approximately 4,000 associates per week. Those are folks, thank you very much. You can go to the next slide, sorry. Next slide, there you go. Uh, we pay approximately 4,000 associates per week. Uh, we do all of our payroll processing in-house. We adhere to all federal and state employment laws. Uh, we do provide medical benefits. Um, you do earn paid time off and we pay weekly. Uh, we offer three different pay options, whether it be direct deposit, a check, or we use a rapid pay card, which is like a cash card. The best news is there's never a fee to you. The way that we make our money is that we pay our associates a negotiated pay rate and um, bill our customers a different rate. So that's how we make our money. We have many, many, many jobs available. Um, a lot of our businesses in the light and industrial arena, which means they're unskilled positions, some skilled positions as well. But we also have administrative and professional types of opportunities. I'm very proud to say that we always provide essential workers as a bulk of our businesses in the food processing industry. That means that our people, our associates, are helping put food on the table and medicine in the cabinets. So we're very proud of that fact. Um, the jobs in Philadelphia, you have an opportunity to earn up to $15 an hour for the unskilled position. Um, there is opportunity for overtime and we do have temp to hire opportunities. These are long term steady jobs and an opportunity to get your foot in the door for what could be a long time career. We need people now. These are our two Philadelphia locations. Please, please, please do reach out to them. Um, contact them at your earliest convenience because we do need people now. You can go to the next slide, please. This is a barcode you can use that will direct you to our website so you can begin the application process or you can go to www.accustaffing.com or you can contact one of our Philadelphia branch locations. We look forward to hearing from you very soon. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Lori. Uh, we have a few more presenters. Uh, we thank you everyone for their, their patience. I know we're scheduled to end at five. We'll go over just a little bit. Uh, our next presenter is the Department of Revenue, Vicki Riley. Yeah, unmute yourself, man. There you go. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you all this afternoon. I just want to say thank you, Lamar, and thank you, Seth, for inviting the Department of Revenue. I just want to share some, and I won't be very long at all, some important information to all of you here uh, on this Zoom event. And I please ask you to please share with individuals that you may know. So today I will just be primarily talking about uh, what's available for persons to have paid 
who have not paid their real estate taxes and who may have be having difficulties paying their water bill. So first, I just want to give you an update on the Department of Revenue. We are back to answering telephones um, and emails. There's about uh, three business days to respond to emails, but we do encourage everyone to please contact us. Um, when I finish with this, all our contact information will be on our final page. On our final page, so please contact us with your questions and your concerns. Now, many persons like to pay their water bill and their tax bills in person. Unfortunately, the Municipal Services Building is still closed to the general public, but we are allowing people to make in-person payments, but by appointment only. So if there's someone who wants to pay their water bill in person at the Municipal Services Building, you're gonna find that link on how to do so, and that would be on our website. Now, regarding real estate taxes, um, we have two programs that their expiration dates are coming up in September the 13th, and we want everyone to know about these, spread the word. One is for homestead exemption, that, and both of these programs, like I say, have a September 13th deadline. Homestead exemption is a program for every homeowner who lives in the city of Philadelphia and they live in that property. It gives you up to $629 every year off of your real estate taxes. And here's the good thing about that. There are no income requirements and there are no age requirements. If you own and live in a property, you qualify for the homestead exemption program. So we wanna make sure that everyone knows that that deadline is coming up soon. And the other one that's uh, ending on September the 13th or the deadline is on September the 13th, is called our Senior Tax Freeze Program. Now this is for persons who are 65 years or older. And what happens is that when they apply for this program, their taxes are frozen so that they will never increase. So that could be a very financial, big financial saving to some persons who um, are 65 years or older. And if anyone is having trouble paying their real estate taxes, the one thing that we want them to know is to please contact us. Do not ignore any notices. If there are persons who are having trouble with their water bill, the water department has extended its water shutoff until August the 31st. So in the meantime, if someone is having problems, they should uh, contact Water Revenue Bureau or the Water Department actually, and uh, apply for the tier assistance program. And we really encourage that for persons who may um, have lost their jobs or on layoff and they're having trouble paying their bills. So please contact us with that. And if there's a business that is behind on their taxes, uh, we also have programs for them, payment agreements. We have them for persons who are complying before March. We have for persons that were in a payment agreement that needs renegotiation. And we have payment agreements for someone who may have owed back taxes prior to March. So now, next slide, how to contact the Department of Revenue. As you can see, our email is there, revenue uh, at phila.gov. Or if it's a water question, WRB, which stands for Water Revenue Bureau Help Desk at phila.gov. Or feel free to call us at any of these uh, any of these numbers. And if you have a question that you'd like for me to answer, my website, um, my email address is there also. But more importantly, we'd like for you to follow us on our social media because if there are any changes that are going to be made, we're going to announce it on our social media. So that's all that I have to say to you, just to give you another update. I hope this information can be beneficial, even to those that are listening and those who are here with us today. Thank you so much, Lamar. Thank you so very much, Ms. Vicki. Uh, our, our next presenter is Pennsylvania Career Link. Uh, we have Madi, uh, Wesley, and Scott, who will be presenting on behalf of the Pennsylvania Career Link. Your slides are up, and please unmute yourself.
Uh, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Scott O'Hara. I am the are one of the business service representatives with Pennsylvania CareerLink. Um, thank you so much to the DA's office for having us here today. Uh, we do also have Maddie on and uh, Wes uh, from the Office of Reentry Partnerships and then also the team lead for employer engagement. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, CareerLink is kind of a, a very large, um, all-encompassing workforce development system. Uh, we help both job seekers and employers uh, fortunately for everybody on the call, um, all of our services are free to you. We're, you know, funded by federal government and state government, so there's no need for any payment or anything like that. Um, for job seekers, we can assist you with job search assistance, um, resume building, interview prep, job matching, um, getting you raised for specific opportunities that you may be interested in. Uh, we have access to hundreds of employers and thousands of job opportunities in the Philadelphia area. Um, we'll send out personalized invites to interviews and recruitment events um, that you may have expressed interest in those fields. Uh, and then also we'll give you access to uh, training programs, um, internships, things like that. Uh, for employers, uh, we have kind of on the flip side access to a large and diverse pool of applicants. Um, we do pre-screening of those interested individuals if that's what, something that you're interested in. So that way everybody that you're meeting with has already, you already know that they're meeting the basic requirements that you need. Um, we can set up and coordinate interviews and recruitment events. Um, right now, we're doing that all digitally. Uh, the CareerLink offices aren't open. Um, and then lastly, you know, we have access to uh, funding for on-the-job training, apprenticeships, and other initiatives. Um, I could go on and on and on about all the different things that we do offer, uh, but if you, you know, I do want to keep ourselves short in the interest of time. So if you go to the next slide. Um, here's the contact info if you're interested in following up on, on any of these initiatives. Uh, if you're a job seeker, you can go to pacareerlinkphl.org. You can see immediate job postings that we have, uh, access to virtual resources, and you can also create a CareerLink profile, which gives you the ability to apply to all of our job opportunities. Uh, if you have any issues with that or you want somebody to follow up, uh, feel free to call our toll-free jobs number. Uh, it's 888-833-750-JOBS. Uh, or you can email me directly at uh, s.ohara at pacreelingphl.org. Uh, if you're an employer on the call and you are looking for assistance in, in finding people to fill positions, uh, please reach out to Wesley Garris, the Business Services Engagement Team Lead. Uh, he can set you up with one of my colleagues who's um, engaged with your industry to find candidates for you. And there's his email address and his phone number there. Uh, thank you all very much for your time and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, Wesley, and thank you, Madi. Uh, or Maddie, I'm sorry. Uh, the next presenter will be Mariana Falco from Students Run Philly Style. So glad to have you. So um, thanks so much for having me. Um, so I'm from Students Run Philly Style. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, actually. Um, so Students Run is a nonprofit organization here in Philadelphia. I've been around since about 2004, um, and we work through uh, with young people through mentorship and long distance running for kids in sixth through 12th grade. Um, and actually earlier this year, we launched a new program of students run. So it's from applying the same running and mentorship problem um, in partnership with the DA's office actually to develop a youth diversion program. Um, so my love is again, a running and mentoring program um, that works with young people who are facing different delinquency charges um, and we're basically diverting them away from the justice system by enrolling them in our running and mentoring program. Um, and so as to once students enroll in the program, they run for um, about three months, though our fall season is going to look a little bit different um, just due to everything with COVID-19 and local races being canceled. Um, but typically they run for about three to four months training for a milestone race like the Philadelphia Half Marathon um, or the Broad Street Run or other races like that. Um, a few things that uh, students can get along the way um, when they're enrolled in the program is that they earn sort of uh, program gear, they earn running shoes. Um, we also pay off their restitution fees that come with their arrest um, when they complete their first milestone race. Um, after their second milestone race, their charges are dropped. Um, and once they complete the program, their record is fully expunged. Um, so we had our pilot season in January, um, obviously had some adjustments due to COVID-19, um, but had a really successful program. And so thanks to the DA's office, uh, we're able to continue into the fall and start a second cohort. 
Um, and so we're hiring uh, sort of on an ongoing seasonal basis, we're hiring for youth advocates um, who, youth advocates are people who run with the students. Um, that said, you don't need to actually be, you know, a super fast or, or dedicated um, runner yet to apply. Um, we've had people sort of uh, from all, all physical activity backgrounds um, join us in our programs. And really the, the goal of the Youth Advocate is to support youth enroll in the program um, by running with them. So they're actually participating in the running practices three times per week. Um, they're completing the races with the student um, or with the team of students. And um, we also do some, a little bit of case management. And so uh, youth advocates will also write like progress notes and case notes um, about students um, as they're progressing in the program. We also do bi-weekly progress calls with families to keep the families engaged and let them know how students are doing. Um, and so really the youth advocates are sort of in that mentoring role and providing some sort of, uh, wraparound case management um, as needed for students in the program. Um, it is an hourly position, it pays $20 per hour and we provide um, training, we also provide gear and everything that you would need in order to um, successfully run the races with students. And we always cover all um, race fees and everything like that. So the program is free to participate for students um, and for our mentors. Um, so if you wanna go to the next slide, actually, so we are currently um, about to finish hiring for this upcoming season. So if anyone is interested in applying, I would definitely recommend uh, getting your your resume and cover letter in soon, like by next week. Um, that said, if um, you know now is not the time, we are going to be rehiring for this sort of end of fall um, season for, for our next season to start in January. Um, so at the bottom there is uh, the full job description if you wanna read through um, what the youth advocate role entails. Um, if you're ready to apply once you read through that, um, you can email your resume and cover letter to that diversion email. Um, and then if you have any specific questions before applying or you would just like to know more about the program, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me directly um, at my email or phone number. Um, but I think that's it. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for uh, being part of today's discussion. Um, our next presenter, and we'll have one more presenter uh, after our next presenter, uh, is Caregivers America, Mariana Melendez. We appreciate you being on today. Feel free to unmute yourself, your slides are up. Hi, thank you, G. Lamar. I'm Mariana Melendez, HR recruiter at Caregivers America. I'm excited to be here and talk to you about Caregivers America. Um, next slide, please. So Caregivers America is a Simplora Health Group organization, one of the largest home care companies in the country with operations in five states. We are currently hiring for home health aides, CNAs, um, registered nurse positions per diem. We have the availability of Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., and Saturday and Sunday open availability. Um, you know, we have competitive rates, medical benefits, 401k, uh, vision, dental insurance, life insurance. Um, next slide, please. Um, the application and onboarding process is super simple and easy. Um, everything is now virtual, so we will do our documents, everything through DocuSign. We offer both English and Spanish applications for our um, bilingual speakers. And we would like for you to come on board with us within seven days. So um, our con my contact information is below. You can contact me at the number below and also the email. Um, you can apply easily online through our website at caregiversamerica.com, or you can simply give me a call and um, I'll assist you through the application process. But um, that's about it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on. Our last presenter today is uh, Kate or Katie from Philadelphia Coalition Against Hunger. Glad to have you on, Katie. Unmute yourself for your slide row. Great. Hi, everybody. My name is Katie Milholland, and I am the community educator at the Greater Philadelphia Coalition Against Hunger. So happy to be here with you all today. 
Uh, at the Coalition Against Hunger, we help connect people with the food resources that they need to lead healthy lives. And I'll tell you about some of those resources. We can head on over to the next slide. So the work that we do falls into three sort of buckets, and those are the orange circles at the top. So they are immediate relief, short-term relief, and long-term relief. So the immediate relief bucket would be for anyone who needs food now, who any, anyone who needs direct immediate connection to a resource. One of the ways that we help people connect to that resource is through searchable food pantry maps. So these are food pantry maps, not only that tell you what food pantries exist in the city and actually in the five county area, um, but these are maps that allow you to actually look by your address. So you can find food pantries that are close, that are convenient, that work for you, no matter where you are. Included in the food pantry maps, we also host a summer meals map for the five county region. This is a map that you can go and find a summer meal site for kids 18 and under. Kids 18 and under are entitled to a free meal all summer, no ID, no proof of income, no questions asked. So you can find a site uh, using one of our maps. We also offer that service via our hotline. So if you don't wanna go on the map and sort of do that yourself, you can give us a call and someone will work with you one-on-one, -on -one, determine where you live and help you to find the closest pantry and summer meal sites to you. And then finally, we do provide some support, support to food pantries um, in the form of food, in the form of training, in the form of uh, fellowship and other important support. Bucket two is short-term relief, and this is a huge part of what we do. We provide over-the-phone SNAP applications. SNAP is an extremely confusing program, and with county assistance offices closed, it's actually harder than ever to apply. Uh, so we step in and we help make that connection easy. If you give us a call at our SNAP hotline, a knowledgeable SNAP counselor will be able to walk you through the entire process, apply with you over the phone, and make sure that that application gets turned in correctly. The second important service that we offer is case management and follow-up. Sometimes things go wrong with these programs and it's not always clear how to fix those problems. If something goes wrong with your application or with your SNAP benefits, a case manager will be able to give you a call, follow up with you and walk you through the process of making sure that that issue is rectified. And then finally, the third service we provide in that bucket is just up-to-date information. With COVID-19, uh, SNAP information and things with the program are changing, it feels like every day. And it can be pretty confusing to keep up with what's going on and what the current rules are. That's where we step in. We are the SNAP experts. So you don't need to memorize all of the details. You just give us a call and we'll let you know what's going on, if you're eligible and how to apply. And then finally, the last bucket is long-term relief. And this is where the advocacy branch of our organization sits. Advocacy is more important than ever. And we are involved in advocating for really important changes like expanded SNAP benefits. And we'd love to include you all in that advocacy work. So one of the things that you can do to be connected with us is you can sign up for advocacy alerts. Whenever there's a need to engage in advocacy, such as signing a petition or calling someone, we will send you an email and we will give you all of the information so that you know exactly what to do and who to call. And then finally, we have been sending weekly COVID-19 response emails to all of our supporters, letting them know what's going on with our organization, but also what's going on with important anti-hunger programs. We can head on over to the next slide so you can know how to contact us. So our SNAP and food pantry hotline is 215-430-0556. And that's just a great catch-all if you forget any of the other links or numbers listed on this slide. Give us a call at the SNAP and food pantry hotline. We are asking everybody to leave a message right now, but we are returning every single call that we receive. So if you call that number and leave a message, we will definitely get back to you. Uh, and then you can see our summer meals map our summer meals hotline, two food pantry maps, and finally, you can sign up for our advocacy alerts and weekly emails at our website, which is www.hungercoalition.org. And that is all I have. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, and thank you to all of our, uh, our presenters today. Uh, just before we conclude, uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, 
work with a great team here in the community engagement unit. You heard earlier from Andre out in Bearfield. Uh, I'm going to ask our community engagement liaison, uh, who serves Center City, North Philadelphia, uh, as well as uh, Northwest, uh, to come on the screen. Uh, Ray Sean Abdullah uh, is our community engagement liaison here in the community engagement unit. Um, hello, everyone. Um, um, like Lamar said, I'm the community engagement liaison who is assigned to both the central and northwest part of the city. Um, I've actually been um, at the DA's office for about four years now, um, uh, previous to coming to our community engagement unit. Um, I worked in our victim services unit as well as our uh, juvenile unit. Um, and so I just want to say uh, thank you so much for um, everyone that that participated in this. Um, uh, we are extremely grateful that we can bring these jobs and these resources out to the community. Um, I also want to say thank you to all of our um, all of our community partners who um, have helped with uh, actually posting um, our flyer on their websites and our um, and their social media pages as well, and sharing all of this um, information. Uh, information with our uh, with their neighbors um, as well. Um, throughout these past couple months, um, we have met with you all in the community in person um, through virtual town hall meetings and community meetings. Um, and uh, one of the things that that we have heard on a consistent basis is the concern um, about uh, about jobs and poverty um, leading to different issues with um, violent crime. So we're very happy that, um, that you are all present for um, this virtual job and resource hub. And we are looking forward to hopefully seeing you all at our next one. Thank you, Rishan. And uh, Adriana will add uh, all of our contact information, specifically our uh, name, uh, position, and email address into the comments section. But uh, just before we end, our special assistant here at Community Engagement, Seth Myers, uh, is also with us. I want to ask to give a few words. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you to all of our employers and service providers who joined us today. Uh, you make this event possible, and so we really appreciate all the support. Um, I want to say thank you to all of the job and resource seekers who joined us today. Uh, please do follow up with all of our employers. I believe you uh, can get all of the contact information for the, those presenters today uh, in the chat feature. Um, it, it's been great in the last couple of weeks to hear about some of the success stories that have come out for, of last month's virtual town hall. Um, and so I hope that this time next month, uh, I'm learning about the jobs that you've applied for and, and hopefully we'll be starting by that point. Uh, finally, uh, just wanted to let everyone know that we do uh, intend to continue continue hosting these virtual one-stop events uh, for the foreseeable future on the first Thursday of each month. Uh, that means that come early September, we will be hosting our next virtual one-stop event. Employers and service providers, I'll be contacting you uh, via email in the next couple of weeks uh, to, to work out the logistics. So thank you again to everyone. And thank you all for being on. I will uh, just add one piece uh, to uh, what Seth mentioned just a moment ago. Uh, we'll also be sending a document to, to all the employers. We want to capture uh, 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 and, and collect data uh, as relates to uh, how many people you've been able to hire or how many uh, uh, people have, have connected uh, with your resources if you're a social service provider. Uh, and so we'll certainly be in contact again to all of our job seeker, seekers and resource seekers. I hope this information was helpful to you. Uh, and our contact information has been added into the chat section. Feel free. Uh, to reach out to us uh, directly again. Uh, my name is G. Lamar Stewart, and I'm the Chief of Community Engagement. Andrade Barefield is one of our Community Engagement Liaisons. Uh, Ray Sean Abdullah is also Community Engagement Liaison, and Seth Myers, our Special Assistant in Community Engagement. All right, be safe. Thank you for, uh, for being with us today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in September. Bye-bye. Thank you.